Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to see how we can run the SPFX web parts or app customizers with run with elevated privileges using Power Automate. So most common method, most common uh, illustrated way of uh, running the SPFX web part with the additional contribute or the owner rights is using the application ID, the client ID and client secret way where you are required to register your app within SharePoint or at Azure portal and then in turn guess a client ID and client secret then generate the token and then pass on the token back so that you can access the SharePoint list or do any elevated operations within SharePoint but over here we are going to take a look at a different way and very easy uh, way I would say like rather than writing the cumbersome code you can simply like uh, build your solution with a low code uh, way where you just need to like uh, plug in one power automate with your site and that power automate would run the elevated privileges uh, operations for you so that's that's the way we are going to take a look today so right now you can see i'm i'm on one of my communication site and the most common example where we want the readers to run some operation where we want uh, them to contribute to the site or save something to the site then we require to have your this spfx web part app customizers run with elevated privileges so as i said we are not going to use the client id or client secret way or registering any app within azure portal we are going to work with power automate to the same operations so i am on my communication site where i have this submit feedback option so this site is open for everyone for the read access but only the contributors or owner would able to create any content inside this site. But I still want my readers to submit the feedback or do some operation which is requires an elevated privilege could be an owner right or contributor right. So that's what we are going to take a look. So I have actually just created one app customizers which can place this submit feedback button on my site. So it's a pretty simple app customizer which is creating one button and on button we are calling one of the operation the power automate so that we can submit something into our sharepoint site so let me just walk you through the app customizer so this is my app customizer is it's a basic one i am just writing to the uh, top placeholder adding this uh, uh, inner html as div and adding up style so this is not the actual right way which i actually use it uh, prefer so i prefer to create the reactive components all the time but just for demo purpose i have just put the inner html with a plain uh, this html where i have this button and i have just put one anchor tag with the href so this href i am going to tell you what i am doing over here so let's just uh, go back to our site and now i am going to create one of the power automate which which would actually do the operation of this elevated permissions so right now i'm as i said like submit feedback would be saving the data somewhere within the list or it could be any other operation so it could be like adding some current users to some some group on button click so that operations can also be possible so but these operations would require the extra privilege permissions on the sharepoint side but the readers can't do that so that's why we are going to take a look at this one of the power automate so I am going to create one Power Automate Instant Cloud Flow. Skip the trigger for now. And in the this trigger, I am going to write when the HTTP request is received. So this is the trigger I am going to choose. So when an HTTP request is received, and you can see it's a premium connector which is required for this one so you need to run this power automate with your account with any service account which is configured with the premium connection so probably like uh, it's a good way it's a right way like to have one service account uh, running all the flows with a premium connector as well so this is the trigger point which we are going to use and you can see like url will be generated after save so that this will give us a unique url which would be generated for this flow so whenever that url is hit the flow would get called and it hardly take milliseconds to get that execution of that flow done so if it's just like operation of adding sharepoint list item or like adding the user into a specific group 
it hardly takes milliseconds so we not need not to worry about the performance as well if this button is clicked then it may take 5 seconds or 10 seconds to perform that operation no it does it actually runs immediately and do the operation in milliseconds so that i am going to show you as well so that's why like i like this solution because it's a low code it's a quick you can just build your solution within minutes and get that uh, available to be run rather than having this application or client id generated with your tenant admin and then or as your portal admin then have that uh, client id secret generated your access token and then doing all those uh, cumbersome logic into the code so this is the quick way uh, for the users who prefer low code solutions so let's go ahead with this so in next step i would be actually just uh doing one operation and i would actually rather than like submitting or creating any list item i would just simply choose one op uh, operation of adding the user to a specific group let's say so i'll just do that before that i need to find out a way because this url which i showed you in the first step is a static url which would be always same now i wish to read the parameters in from the url so that i can make it dynamic for example my reader is let's say uh, abc at the rate uh, some person so i need to pick the username i need to pick the what action that user is doing so that action can be read from the parameters so that parameter i'm going to use so i'll just use this parse json operation and in this parse json i am going to uh, use this uh, trigger output queries so in the queries i would actually get the parameters which are being passed along with this http request so with that i am going to uh, go to the expression type in the trigger outputs and in the trigger output i would use the trigger output from queries so this would give me all my parameters request parameters which is added as a query to that request i'll just say okay and the schema i wish to actually generate that from sample so let's do that i i wish to get that as a current user and just say blank so that it can generate the schema for me so my current user would be passed as a parameter so whenever this button is clicked i would be reading my current user and pass this to flow so that's why i'm using this trigger output queries and in the next step whatever operation you wish to do for example like adding list item or adding the users to a specific group so that we are going to use we are going to do with in the next operation so that uh, let's say like a send http request because for sample i will be just adding that specific user to a to a group so i'll just go to send an http request to sharepoint and we'll pick my this site method i would say post because i wish to add that user to one specific group api endpoint so to get uh, uh, to add the users first of all we have to get the users and as a post request we have to pass the metadata with the login name of that user so i'm just going to add or write the api endpoint which would give me site group site groups and get by id id of that group so i we, we are going to just use that id and users so it will give me the users but as it's a post call so in the metadata i would be passing the new username so before that let's find the user uh, group id i'll just duplicate this tab and we'll just go inside our site site permissions advanced permission settings and let's say i'll just pick that members so right now it's blank and the group id is 5 i'm going to use the group id as 5 and in the headers we have to pass on the headers the content type and that accept so i'll just say accept and type in by my hand application json for two purpose i'll just copy this one and i'll do the same stuff for my content type header application json for data purpose 
and in the body I have to type in the metadata so I'll just copy this metadata I'm just copying that from notepad and pasting it so it's a metadata type as the user login name and this is the UPN so uh, lastly like you have to open this I colon zero and then membership and then the uh, parameter name which we got from this parse JSON so current user so this is how we are going to do this elevated operation which is just allowed to the owner of that site so this uh, uh, this, this uh, flow would be running in my context because my this service account is running this flow so that would do the operation though like other users are not provided with any rights on the site so I'll just save it and so that I can get that URL so once the flow is saved we'll have this URL and I'll just copy this URL in a notepad and append the parameter current user and the name the, the email ID of the user so I have actually copied the email ID of my colleague so I just copy this and append to that request and simply for test I'll just go open my browser hit this URL so I'm getting HTTP method because we forgot to set the method into this uh, trigger so I need to just set the method as get and then save it once and I'll just again after saving I'll just hit the same URL so now it's executed so let's go back to our flow to check so it ran successfully and if we see like it should have added the user to our visitor uh, this member group so let's see yep so my colleague got added to this group of member so it's the same URL which we just used we are going to use into our application customizer and over here I have already pasted so let's just replace that with a new one so I'll just replace it so this current user would be passed as in parameter and you can very well read this current user using this your uh, this uh, SPFX code using PNPJS or if you wish to use the SP HTTP utility you can you will get the current context of the user you can dynamically pass that but for this demo I have just pass that as hard coded so that if a person if a button is clicked it should actually click on this URL and as well as like instead of using the anchor tag you can keep that as button and on button click you can keep that as calling this link and then reload your screen so probably like uh, that operation you wish to do so you can very well have that in place so I'll just go to my this uh, uh, site and then click on this link so right now because it's anchor tag it opened the URL in, into a new window but you can as I said like you can have a, have a very well uh, anchor which can reload the, this uh, screen again rather than opening this into a new tab so for our testing I've just opened that into new tab so if I will just go and look at my flows and we'll find out that whether our flow yeah it did run and you can see like it took only 401 milliseconds to make this operation so rather than uh, I mean thinking of uh, we are waiting for 5 to 10 seconds it's just taking milliseconds so it's not any performance issue or uh, user would not take much time to have that operations done from their behalf so this is a, this is a different way of uh, running the your SPFX code with elevated privileges instead of using any client ID or client secret so I hope uh, this you could find this useful and if you have any other questions on this topic then feel free to drop me comments i'll be happy to answer so that's it for today thank you